Well, good morning and uh, welcome to Mac TV as we continue our series of interviews leading up to the US Open T20 tournament, a US Open tournament that you all were worried about that might not have come off. But the good guys like Sha Zafa, Makwarishi, and the others at Cricket Council USA, they have worked tire tirelessly over the past few months to ensure that there is a tournament this year. And on the 15th, the umpires, 15th of December, the umpires will call play for the 12th edition of the US Open. One of the key figures in that setup is joining me now, and that's Charles Zafa out of Canada, a very cold Canada, I'm told, um, but he's warming up this morning with his coffee, and he joins me uh, to just bring you up to date uh, with what's going to happen at the US Open. Good morning, Shah. how are you? Oh, good morning, and uh, thanks for waking me up early for this interview, although I like it, nice and cool. It is uh, minus one today here in Canada, and it's raining, so it seems like fall is going away. But we do get some sunny, sunny days and high temperature, time to time. So, uh, uh, well, I mean, day, we are. I think it's better to be cool than hot. You know? <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. I love the cool weather as well. And uh, I never thought that there was an issue in waking you early because at the U.S. Open, you're normally the first guy to get up and have everyone busy and ready to go down at the ground you're always downstairs i don't know if they open the kitchen earlier for you at the hotel to give you breakfast but you're always ready in the lobby and ready to go so i know you're an early man yeah but you know the call of play had not been called yet <laughs> <laughs> anyhow uh, it's wonderful to have you on the program and um you know this morning we just want to talk a bit about um you know the preparations going into that tournament tournament gets off on December the 15th and I know it has been a bit of a headache in terms of uh, the protocols and, uh, and the COVID-19 pandemic around. Uh, give us an idea of how difficult it has been to put everything in place leading into this tournament. Uh, it has been, um, I would say not a difficult, but it has been challenging to, um, to uh, consider that, you know, safety is always a number one priority for for human being, especially for everyone involved in this tournament. We just want to make sure that when U.S. Open goes, we, uh, to, to goes on on December 15th, uh, we are following the uh, uh, COVID-19 guidelines from the local county uh, state department and, uh, and, um, and our own you know, uh, guidelines to ensure that safety protocols have been in place. Uh, and because everybody knows an environment is not going to be the same, although the ground will be green out there, but the environment would not be the same. So everybody else cooperation uh, is also needed to make sure the protocol has been followed. We had made uh, doc first of all documentation to see the protocols are approved by the uh, local authorities or at least been reviewed and okay by the local authorities reviewed and audited by us to make sure that we have not catch anything. Then it goes to the uh, other, you know, the parties involved like ICC, Cricket USA, you know, they has also issued a guideline regarding the COVID-19, uh, you know, the resumption of play. So we have to review those guidelines as well and then develop our own guidelines, see what is our environment is and how we are going to uh, uh, implement those guidelines and into uh, uh, ensuring that the players coming in are safe. We do not go into the extent of the uh, the those guidelines because they are developed for the international level of uh, tournaments and international events, right? And uh, but whatever we have within our control, we want to make sure that the uh, player safety is being the top priority uh, to. Uh, um, for the U.S. Open, uh, before when people coming into the U.S. Open, when people are playing into the U.S. US Open, and when we are leaving the field, right? So um, we have done a lot of uh, hard work, and it's a it's an extensive guideline that we're doing it. Their summary of the guideline will be shared with all the owners ahead of time, so they know that what are the expectations and cooperation that are needed from them. So a lot of work has been put into it, and I will probably go into the more detail as we go on to the interview. And in yes, the case, um, what we well, I want, that was actually my next question. Um, what will be different? Let's, let's put it into perspective. A team shows up last year at the US Open. They go into the ground to take part in the tournament. 
uh, what will be different this year with a team showing up at the ground? Um, take us through a match in terms of uh, you know the, the protocols and what will be required by the teams. Um, <clears throat> team will come up. Team will continue to come with their enthusiasm to come and play the U.S. Open. We were not going to take that away from them, right? However, when they arrive at the hotel, right, we will recommend them that they stay, you know, as close as a group because they come as a group, right? So we basically putting the bubbles for them within their team environment that they do not go out and mingle around with everybody in the city and, uh, and, and states like this. So they should, if they can find themselves within the area and they still have some way, shape, or form of freedom to go out and eat and then have fun and stuff like that, no problem. But unnecessarily unknowing people should be avoided in terms of, you know, they're not being, getting infected with them, right? Interacting with them. So they're at the hotel. Hotels are, we are talking to the hotels. Hotels are, will be safe. They will be following the protocols, the COVID-19 protocols, ensuring that cleanness and everything is there. So from the hotel, um, they are they so used to come for the meeting, but I think this year meeting will be on the Zoom. So um, this way, you know, we also uh, have everybody on the Zoom and do the meeting. Then when they come to the stadium, when they arrive at the stadium, there will be form given to them for the uh, uh, verification or you call the uh, health check, I, I would call in a sense that they have been COVID-19 questionnaire, which they probably had about three, four questions. They will sign those questions that, yeah, they did not have this fever. They did not have, they did not interact with this and possibly, you know, a kind like this. Once their question is there, they're going to sign that form, their information. Uh, we already have their information, people coming in as a player. There will be the list of the team coming in at appropriate time. And those players will be checkmarked, whoever has, we have their details. So they don't have to sign any other form except the questionnaire. After that questionnaire, their, their temperature check will be done, right? And this, there will be a sanitizer table at the, at the door that they can clean their hands and everything before they enter the stadium. The, at this particular time, only the players and player team officials will be allowed to enter the stadium. Public is not being allowed you know, into the area where players will be sitting. Uh, we also, uh, so two teams are coming. So when they come in, they will be assigned a dressing room. Dressing room will be clean before they come in. And they go into the dressing room to change. After the dressing room is changed, they are going to come out into the fielding area, field area where they're going to play. There will be two dugout. They're going to sit in their specific dugout with the, with the chair. And then when they leave the room, dressing room, dressing room will be clean again for the next team to come. Once they leave the room, they're not going to be able to go back in. They're going to stay outside. When they're playing, they're going to sit in the ground dugout. There will be a sanitization station uh, in between the two dugouts with the official third umpires or like me or somebody else, like game officials will be sitting in there and there will be sanitization table. So if they need to do some sanitization, hands wash or something uh, with the sanitize, sanitized uh, liquid, it will be available for them on that table. So that is, uh, and again, the game starts, then Empire will take over. They were not allowed to sweat the ball, uh, you know, um, using this salvia to clean the ball and everything else like this. So there will be some restrictions in there that what they can or cannot do in the field. This is all for their protection. Now the question comes in that the people, the, the team that is coming next or the people team, they want to come and watch, right? What are they going to do? So what we have done or proposed to the city that we, in this stance, like public viewing stance, we are going to make a section, eight team sections. So each, each bleacher has one section and then there's a stairway and then there's a section, then there's a stairway, right? So those, each section has been assigned to one team. So that specific team name will be placed on the, on the section of the bleachers that they can go. So four will be on one side and four will be on the other side and there will be a lot of space between the team that they, those sections are there. So when they, if they do come arrive earlier, they will go and wait in their sec uh, section. And after the game, they go back into their section and change whatever they want to, to, to do with that. 
So this is all, and the next team will come into the clean dressing room and they will wait to come onto the ground to play. We will do the toss in the green room an hour before, uh, no, 45 minutes to 30 minutes before the game to make sure that the everything is ready to go and the game will, will start on time uh, and then go on and trying to do as less activity at the ground as possible, except the playing. Oh, tell me uh, the um, detail, uh, detail procedure yeah. that the team will be going through. Well, it seems very thorough indeed. And I am very confident that once uh, the team officials and the team players stick with this, that they should be okay. Um, that's one aspect, but how do you intend to keep the employees of Cricket Council USA safe as well? Our employees will go through the same, and I think we need uh, some, um, you know, cooperation from the team and the uh, uh, team officials and the city staff or and our own, you know, the employees and the volunteers, that everybody had to be a very demeanor and calm, because this is something not normally we do. If something they notice that, oh, you know, the, for, the person forgot to, you know, they wipe the hands, right? Or clean the hands, right? Just with the sanitize. Don't go, don't need to be upset about it. You know, it's just that you have to remind him that's okay, you need to do this. And everybody would need this cooperation because sometimes people just go a little bit, a little bit more hot and say, hey, listen, no, you didn't do it type of thing. So um, I request all the team officials and players to be calm, even with the, uh, uh, and control their emotions and uh, and 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 anger if something does goes wrong and uh, with the umpire on field and off field. So let me walk through what the employees will go through. Uh, yeah. There will be a certain number of employees, but there will be a lot of volunteers, right? Uh, so for the employees and volunteers, uh, they will be asked questions the same way the uh, protocol for the players are, and they will be only allowed to enter after the uh, temperature check and uh, and their, their sanitization and done, they go to their specific area. So for example, the media will have a specific area. There will be the limit of limited limitation of people that can go into the uh, into the media media area uh, for that number is required, like only the commentators. There will be a space between the commentator that we follow the social distance. Uh, scoring area, there will be not you know, like usually there are four or five and people are hanging around in the back and we're going to happen. It's going to be very restricted area to do. We're not going to have many people walking in there. We will try to put this one, you know, the scorers, uh, online scorer down by the uh, official booth on the field where officials are sitting to ensure that if a uh, team has any questions or something, they can at least still have an opportunity to talk to them. Right then, obviously, our our TV crew and the uh, online media for the scoring board and you know, things are upstairs. So there's a crowd control. So um, and they will be, uh, you know, um, when they're leaving, right? They will sign off that we're leaving, right? And then once they leave the building or premises, that includes the players, the volunteer officials, that they have to come back through the same door and exit through the different door, right? And when they're leaving, they need their hand and leave. When they're coming in, they will go through the same protocol of talking, you know, like you want to contact, no contact, check, and that will be allowed. So um, I think um, we have put this, uh, the protocol in place. We will hopefully be successful in implementing them, right? As we say, that, you know, uh, as per the protocol. Right now, this protocol has been sent to the city of, uh, Broward County, right? To review that this is what we are doing. Their cooperation is also needed. And if they say everything is good to go or changes needed or not, then we'll make adjustment according to the guideline. Now, this thing that I'm talking to you about the protocol is a general protocol we're doing. The city or the uh, not city, well, I'm just keep saying city because Canada is a city. <clears throat> yeah, the county or the state department, health department or uh, home security, right, uh, has issued a new warning or something, then they will be added on to it. So this can this the protocol can change as up to the event is taking place. Wonderful indeed. And I guess all these uh, precautions that you're taking, all the protocols that you're following are in line with the International Cricket Council. 
Yes, we have reviewed the uh, International Kyrgyz Council uh, return to play guideline, and obviously the uh, U.S. Uh, cricket, uh, cricket USA or USA cricket um, return to play guidelines because we are operating under their governance, right? So we have to make sure that whatever they're mandatory or whatever they're guiding, uh, we need to adopt that. And they are good guidelines, you know. As I mean, they have very thorough on it, but. Um, we did not go into the, we took the thing that is relevant to us, right? And um, and we go along with it. And these copies have been sent to them as well. Wonderful Our protocol indeed. copies have been sent to them. Wonderful. And uh, so it seems as if all is in place in terms of that, uh, to have a successful tournament. Uh, my final question to you this morning, Shah, is uh, how, how is the COVID uh, pandemic in your neck of the woods? Um, before I go, I think uh, it is very important to uh, to um, uh, share with the uh, general public or the people or the fans of the U.S. Open that this year, because of the pandemic, right, uh, our tournament has been reduced to a smaller scale, right? We have not finalized that how many teams will be coming and playing anything like this, but uh, we appreciate everybody's interest and their support for this and everybody's understanding that, you know, uh, this tournament has been, uh, we are coming up with the traditional, are we continuing the tradition, but at the same time, we are going through the pandemic and we have to do you know, our best to make sure the tournament does goes on, right, at whatever the scale. So that's what we're doing. As far as Canada is concerned, uh, borders are still closed till the end of November, right? I uh, extended the uh, numbers of uh, positive testing has been gone up uh, to over a thousand, you know, and that has some panic buttons for the government and they are pushing the hotspot back to the modified stage two. And uh, there was a discussion that my city might go into the modified stage two. There was already been four that have been put last week. Today, I would know that my city has gone back into a stage two, modified stage two or not. But this is the alarming situation in Canada, especially in Ontario, that we have done a lot of, uh, uh, we have taken a lot of control measure, controlling measures in order to uh, control the spread of COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and at one time we were actually brought it down to 200 and less for a day. And we were all happy that we were ready to open. But due to the, uh, the flu season and the school and all that stuff that happened, right? Uh, especially the flu season. If for the last week or so, it has been over a thousand. So that can be a major concern and they are pretty well restricting the things uh, to uh, minimize the the impact, you know, of the infection. I got well, my flu uh, shot, the by the way. I got my oh, flu shot, so, you... and I took a double dose. <laughs> That's important. Well, the borders are still closed here in Trinidad and Tobago as well. And then, you know, we're anxiously looking forward to see uh, whether or not it will be um, reopened soon. Because I can't envisage a US Open without Shah Zafar. And, um, you know, it will not, not be the same. So one hopes that your borders can open as well. One hopes that uh, the borders in Trinidad can open so that I can come across as you and I always work very closely together at these tournaments. I want to thank you, Shah, for joining us this morning and your final words before we leave. Uh, well, thank you very much, Winnie, for, um, for um, taking this opportunity to uh, uh, and allow me to share the insight of the uh, uh, unusual environment with the fans of the US Open, right? And uh, obviously, we are all hoping that um, uh, we will be in person at the US Open, but however, virtual technology would not keep us away from the US Open. We, if we are not in person, we'll be there with the Zoom. So um, uh, to managing still the way we manage this stuff, you know? Yeah. So hopefully the team that are participating and the fans who are coming in, uh, we wish them all the best. And uh, for our fans, we, we uh, encourage them to tune on to the uh, Mac TV to watch all the tournaments uh, games live, right? and enjoy the cricket and continue to support the CCUSA and US Open. Thanks a lot. So you've heard it there from Shah Zafar and he is uh, the manager of the CCUSA tournament. 
He's a tournament committee manager, and he is giving us the assurance that it should be a safe tournament. But he has the warning, a caveat with that, and that is that everyone shows their own personal responsibility. Take your own personal responsibility in your hands in order to have this tournament. Well, that's it from us for, uh, for this morning. Keep viewing Mac TV for all your latest information in terms of the cricket and also all the matches. Good morning and stay tuned. Thank you.